The Sustainable Construction Zone, a YouTube learning channel, presents a presentation on responsible sourcing of timber. In this video, we are covering why this is important, a brief history of timber certification, a look at the FSC and PFC standards and how the chain of custody system works, some of the laws and regulations that apply to the use of timber, how it relates to green building certifications like Bream and LEED, the types of labels used, how to check and validate the chain of custody, some case study examples of how things can go wrong and finally, some top tips for getting it right on your site. Why is this important? Despite significant efforts in the past couple of decades, forests are still being lost at an alarming rate. The picture shows fires set deliberately to clear land for cattle in the Amazon basin in August 2019. Forests are incredibly important. They are one of the great carbon sinks of the world and play an important role in regulating ecosystems and protecting biodiversity. According to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization they also support the lives of as many as 1.6 billion people, or about 25% of the world's population. In the UK, 70% of the timber used is imported with a value of £8.3 billion. Measured by satellite imagery, the amount of forest and woodland cover in the UK is only about 14% of total land area, which is equivalent to a country the size of Lebanon. The UK is also one of the least forested countries in Europe, where the average is 37%. Grown in Britain, the Forestry Commission and the Royal Society of Forestry are all groups that are actively campaigning for new afforestation in Britain to help meet future material demands. Since 1990, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization estimate that 420 million hectares of forest have been lost through conversion to other land uses, although the rate has slowed in recent years. Between 2015 and 2020 deforestation was estimated at 10 million hectares a year, down from 16 million in the 1990s. In many places illegal logging, which is the harvesting, processing, transporting, buying, or selling of timber in contravention of national and international laws, is like this picture of an enforcement operation in Brazil, linked to organized crime, and it supports activities such as gun running, drug smuggling and modern slavery. In Brazil, there is rampant illegal logging and a timber mafia intimidate opponents and maintain a veneer of legitimacy. In Indonesia, rates of illegal logging are estimated to be as much as 90% and in Romania, the forest industry is also dominated by a timber mafia. This is one reason why the procurement of timber is controlled by EU and UK legislation, requiring us to ensure it is bought and traded legally. Labeling wood products with a mark of quality can be traced back in Europe to a French royal decree of 1637, which stipulated that members of the Guild of Cabinet Makers had to mark the furniture they made, Pradier 1989. Other forms of labeling would have emerged in 1990s under forest certification as market-based response to address public concerns related to deforestation, mainly in the tropics. The first of these was Forest Stewardship Council or FSC for short. After the 1992 Earth Summit in Rio failed to produce an agreement to stop deforestation, a group of businesses, environmentalists, and community leaders came together to create FSC gathered in the first FSC General Assembly in 1993 in Toronto, Canada, the group set out to create a voluntary, market-based approach that would improve forest practices worldwide. The main focus of FSC was protection of tropical rainforests rather than forests from more temperate areas, and it remains the dominant certification in these areas today. PFC started life, later in 1999, as the Pan-European Forestry Certification, and was established in response to small business and family forest owners who could not or would not get involved in FSC certification programs. As other certifications were developed in places like Chile, Malaysia, and Australia, it began to recognize or endorse them and in 2004 changed its name to the Programme for the Endorsement of Forest Certification. As an industry initiative, it's grown to become the largest certification scheme for timber worldwide. What is the difference between FSC and PFC? Well, there are some similarities between the two systems and some important differences. 
Whilst both give some assurance and evidence of legal sourcing, it's true neither can provide absolute proof. FSC is a system that national and regional standards that are applicable to the 10 principles of sustainable forest management. These principles were developed by a global partnership of stakeholders and are considered as a whole. The FSC policies and standards are set by consultative process with equal weight in the standard setting process, which is seen as a key strength of the governance of the FSC system. FSC follows the ISEAL code of good practice for setting social and environmental standards. PFC is a system that recognizes various national and regional schemes such as the Canadian Standards Association, the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, from the United States of America, the Malaysia Timber Certification Council and the Australian Forestry Standard amongst others. This is a key difference between FSC and PFC. Some standards recognized by PFC are regional and vary in their application. It is strongly supported by the timber industry, it has grown to become the world's largest certification system. Aside from verification and chain of custody, both systems require control systems to avoid sourcing materials from controversial sources such as illegally harvested wood. And both have third-party verification schemes. As of 2019, 93 million hectares have both FSC and PFC certifications, 2.3% of the world's forests. FAO estimates there are 4,060 million hectares of forests globally. These charts are from the WWF Forest Certification Assessment Tool and show the relative strength and weakness of each scheme across a range of criteria. This is how the chain of custody system works. The forest where the wood is grown is assessed and certified against forest management principles and standards. After this each aspect of the supply chain is checked to ensure the material received is controlled and not mixed up with other non-certified materials, all the way to the construction site or end user. This diagram shows some of the laws and regulations around the world that apply to timber and wood products. In 2003 the European Union introduced the Forest Law Enforcement Governance and Trade Regulations, or EU FLEGT for short. In the United States the Lacey Act of 2008 was the first to prohibit illegal trade in timber. This was closely followed by the Australian Illegal Logging Prohibition Act in 2012 and the European Union Timber Regulation in 2013. The United Kingdom enacted its own similar legislation in 2021 following their departure from the European Union. Green building certifications like LEED and BREEAM recognize procurement of timber from certified sources. BREEAM recognized FSC, PFC and SFI schemes as of February 2022 in version 3.6 of their guidance note reference GN18. Similarly, LEED has a timber traceability credit and recognizes these schemes. All timber has to be demonstrably legally sourced. BREEAM includes additional points for FSC 100% certified timber, rather than FSC mix or recycled designations. Project Chain of Custody Certification If you're interested in making a product claim about the timber used in your construction project, as being responsibly sourced and using one of the recognized logos, then Project Chain of Custody Certification may be of interest to you. Both FSC and PFC provide Project Chain of Custody Certification schemes to allow an owner or a developer of a building project to make a product claim about the timber used in the building being certified and to use their logos in marketing. These require contractors on site to undertake audits to confirm compliance with the certification standard. Types of timber labeling. Both FSC and PFC have different labeling regimes. To be eligible for labeling at least 70% of the material must from an FSC or PFC certified forest. It's important to remember that all wood must be controlled whether certified or not. So where there are mixtures of source materials, some may be from a certified forest and some not, but everything will need to have been risk assessed and controlled if it isn't certified. FSC have 100% recycled and mixed labels. PFC has labels that reference sustainably managed, recycled and controlled sources. 
This is an example to show how FSC labeling works. FSC 100% is probably the easiest to understand of the labels. In this case all the material comes from a certified forest so it is 100% certified. You might also see a percentage quoted on the label with the word mix. In this example a transfer system is used. Some of the material comes from a source forest that is fully certified and some not. The 30% of the original material that was not from a certified forest is from a known, controlled and risk assessed source. It is entitled to be labeled as mix 70%. In this example a mixture of certified and non-certified and non-controlled would would mean it is not eligible to be labeled as certified. Here are seven things that must be on a timber delivery note to demonstrate that the timber is properly certified. The delivery note must show the date of delivery, what certification type is applicable, the supplier chain of custody code, the name and address of the site being delivered to, the name and address of the timber supplier, signatures from the supplier and receiving party and the quantities, types and dimensions of the timber supplied. Certificates can be issued and be valid for several years before expiry. So how do you know and are able to prove that the certificate for the timber you are being supplied with is still valid? Well, one way to do this is to check or validate the chain of custody via one of these websites. You can print or save a copy of a date stamp check as evidence. Here are some case study examples of how things can go wrong. One of the issues regularly encountered is the supply chain understanding of the chain of custody requirements to ensure responsible sourcing. Suppliers who work with timber regularly such as joinery companies tend to have good knowledge, but others less so. The main contractor working on a school project was fully aware of the requirements and had checked the supplier of these glulam beams was certified. What they didn't check or observe was that the beams were processed off-site to add the metal shoe on the end. This meant the chain of custody was broken, and they didn't spot the delivery information provided was to the factory not their construction site. This mean the chain of custody was broken and the material could no longer be claimed as certified. We have also found timber materials in sometimes surprising and unexpected places. Here's an example which has cropped up on a few occasions. Some timber elements are hard to see. This panel product looked like cement particle board. The project team didn't know it contained timber. They had some other similar product which did not contain timber. It was only discovered on site when the material was broken revealing the timber inside. Some suppliers are unaware there is timber in their products. The lift elevator supplier on this project was convinced the requirements did not apply as there was no timber. However there was a subcontracted fit-out which included timber elements. It was not obvious once the finished product was on site. The material was covered and the issue was only discovered after it was installed. We can't always believe what we are being told. And of course, in an environment where margins are tight, responsible sourcing requirements can be challenged for a variety of reasons like some of these. So to finish off, here are six top tips for getting things right on your site when it comes to procuring and using timber from responsible certified sources. Number 1. Check the construction contract and make sure you have actually bought what you want. 2. Make sure the people who are buying and will be using the materials are clear about what is required. 3. Is there anything that might be ambiguous? For example products that aren't bought as timber but have wood materials in them. 4. Make sure you communicate with suppliers and subcontractors regularly to ensure they are aware of what's needed to comply with the requirements. 5. Identify responsibilities in your team and hold people to account for delivering the requirements, and. And number 6. As construction projects often change, keep up to date with design or specification changes and be aware of potential non-conformances or issues change may cause. Thanks for watching, we hope you found this useful and interesting, and if you did please like and subscribe to flag this to other YouTube users who may benefit. Please feel free to leave any comments.